Maya Nates, thank you so much for joining us today as an interviewee for our Limitless programme. Thank you so much for having me, Ruth. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. You, you've, you've certainly um, been a prolific writer, uh, a published author. You've co-written a best-selling book on Amazon, about Amazon. Um, you know, what, what possessed you to, to write that and how much of an influence do you believe that has become on the sector? Well, I think the, I have a, I'm very fortunate in that the ground has slightly come up to meet me in the sense that I started writing about technology um, when the intersection of technology and consumer adoption really reached critical mass and the impact of technology wasn't just being felt at an enterprise level but it was being felt in every single part of our of our daily consumer lives as well um, and so that led me through a combination as I said I'm a pragmatist of my love of shopping to look really at how technology was impacting retail and that's where I really began to start my focus um, writing about retail technology um, reporting on it for computing and so on and, and that again was around the time that we we were starting to see the rise of Amazon um, fast forward uh, 20 odd years and when I moved from becoming from being a journalist to become a research director I always say that by that point people were offering to pay me more for my opinion than they were for my editorial impartiality which covers that career mm. move but Amazon was still the the, uh, the, the, the elephant in the room um, by that point I was being asked to consult with major um, CPG brands and tier one retailers and the that you could be guaranteed one of the questions in any session, any project we were um, uh, contracted to, 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 to carry out would be, how do I deal with Amazon? What's happening with Amazon? How should I manage my strategy to compete with and perhaps collaborate with Amazon? So um, last year, um, a fellow research director, um, colleague, of mine called Natalie Berg and I sat down to, to write the book and answer some of those questions um, and, and, and hopefully give retailers a bit of a guide as to what Amazon can't do as well as what they do really, really well so that hopefully they can learn to stand apart um, by differentiating on the things that, as I said, Amazon aren't so great at, but also understanding what Amazon has achieved and what they can learn from Amazon and also perhaps borrow from Amazon to go move faster. It's interesting isn't it when you when we reflect back and look at retailers who were fairly prevalent 20 years ago those who didn't adopt technology are no longer with us and the, the last year there's a, a litany of UK retailers who have, have gone by the wayside. Um, what, I, what I wonder is with the emergence of technology retailers had the same opportunity as Amazon they had the same access to uh, software development, etc. The same uh, same landscape, same vision. What do you think was the impediment that stopped retailers embracing technology beyond just having an e-commerce site? Well, really good question because it really hones in on the intersection of technology and business. Essentially, um, I think Amazon had a huge number of advantages. Let's 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 set that out straight away. Um, and I often say that retailers shouldn't directly compare themselves with Amazon because I actually think Amazon is a technology company first and a retailer second. I think that goes some of the way to answering your question, but but, but the, the meaning behind that is that retailers have legacy operations, they have um, tried and tested, have had tried and tested methods of, do, of doing things, ways of doing things for years and years. When Amazon came along, as um, Jeff Bezos, its founder um, and CEO, famously talks about day one, they had a greenfield opportunity and they had technology to enable that. Um, an interesting fact that people perhaps aren't necessarily aware of with Amazon was that Amazon didn't really care what it sold. It just wanted to, to crack the... Um, possibility how to sell via the internet, how to use technology to sell remotely. Um, compare that to the position that retailers were coming from back in 1995 when Amazon was first um, founded. Um, they already knew what they had to sell, they already felt that they had a, an idea of who their customers 
were. And by the time I started talking to retailers about their technology choices, I definitely got the impression that there was a lot of risk mitigation going on. Um, and I think that's why we, we are where we are today, which is traditional established retailers have kind of hedged their bets and invested in technology in a very siloed way. And it's only in perhaps the last decade, as the growth of Amazon has maybe exposed um, the weaknesses in that strategy, they've really tried to unify the channels, unify the way that technology um, operates those channels, orchestrates those channels, and really reorient those channels around the customer, whereas Amazon actually started by centering their their whole ethos, their whole op mode, mode of operations on what the customer would want. So what, what you've also described there is that mind, mind shift change of retailers to start using technology to solve problems and to, to enable that better experience. Now with that comes the understanding of emerging technologies. I know you write about emerging technologies. How do you see the retail landscape evolving, let's say, over the next five to ten years with the adoption of AI, machine learning, etc.? I've always said that retailers, let's say, pre-Amazon era, had become and are still very, very good at automating their processes. When it comes to giving those processes some kind of an autonomy and building systems that can intelligently automate those processes, they have lagged behind. Perhaps because there hasn't necessarily been a strategic need to, and I think that strategic need really is to understand who your customer is nowadays. It used to be enough for retailers to pile it high. I build, if I build it, you will come. If I say I've got a, you know, everything must go sale, I will expect the bun fights at the door for the Harrod sales on the first day. Fast forward to three or four years ago, sat in a PC world about to film a BBC breakfast get a bit and um, there were no crowds at the doors. And the BBC producer was scratching his head saying, oh, I don't know if we're gonna have the right images to go with this report. Um, and they interviewed the manager who said, uh, it's the best day for Click and Collect. I've sold more Dysons today um, than I will do for the next quarter. Mm -hmm. But they're all for click and collect. Everyone's saying they're in the pajamas doing their shopping. Yeah, and they're all gonna. All these customers are gonna come in as and when they wish. Um, so in that sense, we talk particularly in the Amazon book about the on my term shopper and how technology has enabled the customer to shape their shopping journey according to their needs rather than perhaps be dictated to because of the lack of technology, the very analogue, physical, physically based way that retail um, used to operate. Uh, those tables have turned now um, and that's why the customer has become I think a hugely uh, it's a strategic axis that retailers really have to understand. As I said, it's no longer uh, enough to market to and sell to a purely anonymised customer base. Indeed, we as customers using technology and knowing the amount of digital breadcrumbs we leave about ourselves everywhere expect, particularly if we have a digital relationship with a retailer, to be treated better than a one-time anonymous cash paying customer when we walk into a store as well. Your experience has given you a real breadth of, of insight into sectors, technology, etc. What advice would you give to anybody considering journalism, technology, uh, even retail or, or sector specific as, um, as a career path? I think retail, anywhere where there's a challenge, is tr it can be tremendously rewarding. Retail is extremely challenging at the moment, but when you work out what works and what wins with customers, that's incredibly rewarding. I'm often asked for good examples of retailers, good examples of use of digital in store. And when you can point to those kinds of examples, you, you can definitely show how those retailers are winning. Um, an example, uh, example of the last decade that I think we'd all agree with would be Starbucks, for example, in the food and beverage hospitality space, Apple, for example, the ability to delight customers, the ability to um, consolidate a, a really strong brand um, uh, brand identified store estate as well. It's very, very important. So retail's a, a great one to get into. Technology and the intersection at the intersection with retail, again, is 
hugely exciting at the moment because I think there's just a huge amount of difference you can make because of that huge opportunity and that maybe the legacy base that we're coming from and that, that need to digitally transform the industry. Um, there's so much work to be done. So I think there's a huge opportunity to, to move the dial quickly um, if you've got the right people in place that are able to, to, to specify and, and deploy the right technologies. When it comes to reporting all of that and then becoming a journalist, again, I think I would say I would I would I wouldn't be quite as enthusiastic about journalism at the moment. Partly because again of those same effects of, of digitization um, and essentially the, the commoditization of news, um, the commoditization of expert knowledge and knowledge sharing um, platforms and capabilities that, that publishers um, have, have really laid claim to in the past. Excuse me, the the main trend there I see is the move towards monetizing the written word for value-added um, capabilities such as uh, allowing enabling your audience to network with each other each other and build connections with each other i think there's always going to be a need for um, impartial well-researched journalism and i think anyone going into the industry today is going to have to work doubly hard to be able to uh, achieve that um, but those that do, again, the prize will be absolute, absolutely huge. I think I've managed to sort of mitigate the effect of the commoditization of, of, of the publishing industry in my career by moving into research as well. Mm. Um, so I think journalists nowadays have to be uh, bloggers, m media moguls, um, networking aces. There's a huge number of other um, skills that when I was starting out as a journalist I, I didn't think I'd ever need. Um, I think that makes it a huge opportunity for, for someone to become a, a self-made journalist, not to go down the traditional routes as well. But in that sense, it's, the path is, ne is, is not as clear cut as it used to be. So that can be seen as both a, a challenge, but definitely an opportunity. Thank you. What advice would you give your younger 20 year old self? My younger 20 year old self? Um, confidence. Um, have confidence in your own ability. Um, have the confidence to fail as well because that builds your ability. Um, don't be afraid to fail. Um, oftentimes when I've made entrepreneurial decisions or such as to strike out on my own, um, it was somebody else that suggested it. It didn't occur to me myself but once they did I thought oh, well, why not? So I'd say to my younger self and any, anybody of, of that age today, um, don't, don't be limited by your, your own horizons. Try and use other people as examples, as inspiration to, 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 to find out how far you can push those horizons. Um, and the other thing I always say is um, the tools are there nowadays for you to do it yourself, to not have to rely on um, anybody else uh, to, to, to facilitate career progression for you. If you want to go out there and be a retail technology journalist, then there's nothing to stop you starting your own blog, going to uh, check out the latest pop-ups, um, finding out what technology providers are, are behind those pop-ups that are working with the retailers. The providers definitely want to be able to talk about those technologies. So, uh, yeah. Coming at things, not necessarily always, as I said, that clear-cut path. Don't expect to be able to follow that clear-cut path. But the really good news today is that um, the, the technology exists to, be, to enable you to, to take whatever path you wish and, 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 and build your own path. Well, you've been an absolute inspiration to talk to you today. Thank you so much for your candidness as well. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Ruth. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me.